Hey everybody. So I was hoping that when we taught vent basics, I could just do ACDC and that was all you guys were gonna need to know and we'd be done and good to go. However, not sure that's the case anymore. Uh, we're talking about a lot of really, really um, life-saving things now at sort of the end of the line sort of things like hooking people up to a daisy chain of ventilators. To do that, we would have to have people on a different mode of ventilation than I taught you last time. So they have to be on ACPC. So today we're gonna to learn about ACPC and we have Brooke here who's gonna uh, be our learner and guide us through this as well. So I wanna do a quick review of what we learned on the other video. So we talked about triggering and we talked about cycling and we said that the ventilator can be triggered, meaning it starts pushing air by either time or by patient effort. Patient effort that's detected as flow or a change in pressure by the ventilator. Either of those things can trigger the ventilator. And then there's three things that can cycle the ventilator. Cycling meaning you're shifting from inspiration to exhalation. So one of those things was volume. That's what we discussed last time. The other two, one was time and one was flow. So we're gonna talk about these today, okay? So when we talked about ACVC, we talked about we start at a peak, we then go up to some peak pressure, we settle out at some plateau pressure, and then we give six milliliters per kilogram of tidal volume, we deliver that and then the vent stops. And then whether the patient tries to take a breath or whether the machine decides it's time to take a breath, all the breaths are gonna look about like that. So if it waits a little while, it's gonna look like that. If it happens right away, it's also gonna look like that. Okay. We said to do this, to order this, we had to say to the respiratory therapist, that we want to have someone on ACVC. We then had to talk about a rate, a tidal volume, a rate, a tidal volume, a PEEP, and an FiO2. And this is what the machine was gonna do. And then we had to talk about what the patient was gonna do with those settings. So here we had the patient and we said that we needed to know the respiratory rate, the peak pressure, the plateau pressure, the ABG, and the saturation. Okay, so what we're going to talk about today is going to resemble this in a lot of ways. So if you haven't watched this video, the first one, please go back and do that um, and then come back and watch this one. And I think this one will make more sense. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna shift over now. We're gonna talk about ACPC, assist control pressure control. Some ventilators call it pressure assist control. It's all the same thing. There's several different names for it on different ventilators. All right, so Brooke, if I was gonna order ACPC, what do I need to tell the respiratory therapist? You need to tell them what um, your pressures are, so your high and your uh, peak. Okay, so I call it my PI, which is my inspiratory pressure. My PEEP, what else? Um, you're also gonna have to give them a rate. Okay, perfect, a respiratory rate. What else? And an FIO2. Perfect. And we're always gonna start with our mode. So we're gonna say ACPC, respiratory rate, an inspiratory pressure, a PEEP, and an FIO2. Just like we said for ACVC, these two are going to be your ventilation parameters. These two are going to be your oxygenation parameters. Okay, so that's what the machine's going to do. What do I need to know about what the patient's going to do with it? I want to know the patient's actual respiratory rate. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. What do I need to know? What is this pressure going to generate? Um, it's going to generate a volume. So yeah. Look at their volumes. 
So I need to know the volume that the patient is generating with it. Mm -hmm. I need to know my ABG and I need to know my saturation. Okay. So same as before, the respiratory rate the machine is doing, respiratory rate the patient is doing. Before we set a volume mm -hmm. and then we looked at what pressures were generated by it. Now we're gonna set a pressure and look what tidal volumes are generated by it. And then if we know our gas and our SAO2, we know exactly how our patient is doing on those settings, okay? So for example, if I have a patient that's on ACPC at a rate of 12, an inspiratory pressure of 15, a PEEP of five, and an FiO2 of 100%, and on that, they have a respiratory rate of 15, a tidal volume of 420, an ABG of 7.438.75, and a SAT of 95%. I know how that patient's doing. I know they have reasonable lung compliance with only a pressure of 15, they're generating a pretty good tidal volume. I know they're oxygenating well, they're ventilating well, they're breathing over the ventilator, so their own uh, brain stems intact, they're able to generate their own breaths. So that gives me all that information just based on that, okay? So how this ends up being a little different than ACBC is, so here we're gonna start at a PEEP. We're gonna go up instantaneously, essentially, to that other pressure. Here we're gonna say that pressure is 15. Then how is my breath gonna know when to shift from inspiration to expiration. You know? A uh, change in pressure. So it's not actually no. gonna be a change in pressure. This one time is gonna be time cycled, okay? So I actually think that this is a little easier to work with from that perspective. So for example, if I have my patient taking 10 breaths per minute, each breath is gonna be six seconds, right? So let's say, I have one second there, I'm gonna have five seconds there. And then if the patient decides they wanna take a breath before that five seconds, the breath is gonna look just like this and the ventilator is gonna reset and let them take that breath. Okay, does that all make sense? All right, perfect. So um, what we call this how this is one second, this is five seconds. We call that the I to E ratio, inspiration to expiration ratio. So here, that would be one to five. Okay. The beauty of having an inspiratory and an expiratory manipulatable number, we just set that on, the, we turn it off on the ventilator and set that. The beauty of being able to do that is there certain lung diseases where it's really important to us that patients oxygenate better and certain diseases where we really want patients to have a long time to exhale. What is a disease process that a patient needs a long time to exhale? Um, those are gonna be asthma, COPD, obstructive things. Perfect, so if I have a patient who has COPD, for example, I might put them on what we just had them on. This is one second, this is five seconds, and each time they'll get that. What's your I to E ratio, breathing normally? What do you think it is? One to two. Yeah, one to two, one to three maybe. If you're running, maybe one to one, but generally we think of it as being one to two, one to three. So here we're giving that COPD patient extra time to exhale, okay? So that's one way to think of that. However, if I have a patient who's not oxygenating well, the thing that makes patients oxygenate better is having more um, time at the higher pressure where gas exchange can occur. Okay, So I might change this and make this two seconds and this four seconds. Okay, I'm spending more time at the higher pressure, which means more time for good gas exchange, which means better oxygenation. That makes sense? That makes sense. So that's how we would handle improving oxygenation on this. So not only can we increase our PEEP to 
to increase oxygenation. We can increase our FiO2 to improve oxygenation, but we can also change our I to E ratio to improve oxygenation. Okay, that all makes sense? Okay, so that's why I really like ACPC, that easily manipulatable I to E ratio. The reason that this is gonna be really helpful if we have to hook all these patients up to one ventilator, all these patients, I'm saying probably about four is the max we would do. We don't want to do that. There's a lot of reasons why we don't want to do that. But if it's a last ditch effort, we might. But if we set it at a tidal volume, we wouldn't know which patients are getting that tidal volume. If we set it to pressure, then that's easier for us to understand. Okay. So that way you can kind of see what tidal volume each patient uh, correct. Uh, well, no, we're still not going to know that exactly. Oh, we're just going to know that they're a safer. We still have one ventilator, so we can't measure that specifically for each individual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It hurts me inside to think about it too. But if we're at that stage, we're at that stage. So it's something to keep in mind. Okay. So I'm going to give you some settings, and then I want you to tell me based on what the patient is doing with them how you want to change the ventilator. Okay. So I have my patient on a rate of 18, an inspiratory pressure of 15, a PEEP of 5, an FiO2 of 100%, and on that, they're breathing 20. They have a tidal volume of 300, and they have a gas that's 7.20, 60, 75, with an SAO2 of 95. How, what would I want to change, if anything, about this? So they're breathing over the vent, so their um, right stem is intact. Okay, great. Um, so I can't do anything with the rate, necessarily. Um, they're so you of... could change something about the rate, but you just you have could. to keep in mind, oh, sorry. you would have to go even higher than that 20. So if you go from 18 to 20, that's not actually changing anything. Okay, what else? Um, we can look at the ABG and look at elevated. Okay, perfect. Our PCO2 is elevated. Which suggests the patient isn't ventilating well. Okay, how do I fix that? So in this mode, I would increase my um, inspiratory pressure to allow for a greater tidal volume. Beautiful. So I'm going to take that instead to an inspiratory pressure of 20. And when you did that, your patient went to a tidal volume of 420. And then they went right back to an ABG of 7.440. 75, you fixed it, okay? So those are the big things we're gonna manipulate in ACPC, understand that, okay? Do you have any questions about that? Do you have any questions about that? Are you still following the peak pressure when you're doing this? Ah, so we don't really have to follow the peak pressure anymore because the pressure we set is the peak pressure. That's the amount of pressure we're putting in, okay? So we just have to look at that tidal volume. I do wanna point out, you can't just walk in the room and look at the tidal volume. You have to stand there for a minute or so and see how those breaths average out. They're going to be about the same, but not exactly the same. Okay. So all these other things, you can pretty much get an idea of how they are, but go in and really watch that tidal volume and see the range it's picking up. Okay. All right. So that is why I wanted you to learn about ACPC today, in case you find yourself managing four patients on one ventilator. And then I also want to talk to you about pressure support because another lecture we're going to do soon um, is talking about spontaneous breathing trials and that's the mode we're going to use for that. Let's talk about that real quick. Okay, so I always like my pressure time curves, right? They help me understand what's going on with my ventilation exactly. Okay, so we said before either time or a change in flow or pressure could trigger a vent. In pressure support mode, what triggers the vent? Um, yeah, so now we don't really set a rate, except for a backup rate so people don't die, right? But we don't set a rate. We let the patient take all their own breaths, okay? So we're only getting triggered here. And then how do we cycle? How does the breath notice shut off? Yeah, so it's the patient flow rate that the machine understands and, and picks up on. So this, looks a lot more smooth as it's going through. So a patient takes a little change in pressure as they try to breathe. 
it pushes in some air. As the patient's lungs fill up, that breath starts going slowly, 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 right? And then that decides to shut off and go into exhalation. Patient triggers it, same thing, okay? So big difference here, we don't set a rate anymore and it's flow cycled. Okay. Flow cycled is more comfortable for patients and we like to use pressure support also because it keeps them using their own diaphragm to some degree. So what do I need to tell a respiratory therapist if I want them to set my patient up on this? So for pressure support, it's gonna be and then the backup rate, which will be set into it, usually like four or so, four to six. Okay, so, but not really the rate that we're expecting them to use. And then what do I wanna know about what the patient's doing with it? This is the machine, what about the patient? So you wanna know their respiratory rate, um, their tidal volume, their ABG, and their oxygen. Beautiful, yeah. that's exactly right, okay? So if I have my patient on pressure support at an inspiratory pressure of 15 and a PEEP of five and an FIO2 of 40%, and on that, they have a respiratory rate of 15, tidal volumes around 400, altering a little bit, but not dramatically, maybe between 350 and 450. My ABG is 7.345, 80, and my SAT is 96%, this patient's doing a-okay. Okay. We wanna make sure they're comfortable on it. We'll talk a little bit about that in another talk, but this is exactly right, okay? On this, if we need to get patients to oxygenate a little bit better, how do we do that? Um, you can increase your inspiratory, well, your AB or FiO2. Yeah, your PEEP or your FiO2. So right. same as before, these are still my oxygenation parameters. But now this is my only ventilation parameter. I took away my rate, right? So now if I need, if I find that my patient is doing 7.2 and 60, and I don't wanna change the mode, I just want to make them ventilate better, what do I do? So if you just wanna make them ventilate better, you um, increase your inspiratory pressure. Beautiful. That is exactly right. So I would go up to an inspiratory pressure of 20, which would probably take my tidal volume up to maybe 450, and hopefully take my gas back to where I want it. Okay, does that all make sense? Okay, so those are our three basic modes of ventilation, ACVC, ACPC, and pressure support. Uh, we'll talk about one more advanced mode a little bit later, um, but thanks for learning this because you're going to want to know it if we do that daisy chain stuff, okay? Thanks so much for coming.